Hi there, it's Lee here for iMine Blocks. Welcome back to another video. In today's one, I'm going to be looking at the Zcash miner created by Claymore. So, Claymore is a well known uh, crypto miner creator, and um, he's brought out a new uh, version of his Zcash miner version 4. So, I've not actually had a look at any of the previous versions of Claymore Zcash miners, so this is going to be my first uh, one looking at it. But, like I say, I have uh, got Previx experience um, looking at um, uh, a lot of his other miners. So what I'm going to do now is uh, just log into a remote machine because this miner only supports AMD hardware and I'm going to be testing it on two RX 470s. So let's uh, jump on to TeamViewer and we'll go to the machine that we're going to be working on. So it is a uh, Risky Fire 1 or Work 1 I call this machine. Uh, you can see it's currently mining Ethereum and also Zcash using the uh, CPU miner there just on a single thread uh, just as I was doing some other things. Um, but anyway, let's uh, close these down uh, and we'll go through the whole process of getting started with the actual miner, doing the setup and testing it out and seeing how we go with it. So first thing, uh, we're just going to go to the actual Bitcoin talk thread. Uh, you can just do a search for Claymore Zcash Miner or you can um, use a link in the actual video description. Uh, I'll just download it using this Google link. Uh, just right click and download that. What? Hit a download quota limit. Must be popular. Just try it one more time, and if not, we'll go to the. Okay, so we can't use that link. What we'll do is we'll use the uh, mega link, and we'll just open it in a new window, new tab. Sorry. Um, like I said, I'll put a link in the actual description because we're going to go through the process and create a um, sample batch file. Um, so you guys might want to use that as well. So that should have just started the actual download process. I'm just going to save that. By default, it will just go into the downloads folder. Sorry, it's a little bit laggy. I think it's just um, a slight connection issue. Like I say, I'm doing this uh, remotely via TeamViewer, so there might be a bit of a uh, delay backwards and forwards. Uh, so that's downloaded now. We can take a look at our downloads folder. So Claymore Zcash AMD GPU Miner version 4 and we'll just extract that to the same folder name. Let's take a look and see what's inside it. A folder in a folder. Okay, uh, conveniently they've included a start.bat file so we can use this for starting the actual miner. makes it a little bit easier to get started with. So if you just right click on the actual uh, bat file and then we want to go to edit. I'm just going to close down the actual uh, browser for the time being. Okay, so in the actual start.bat file, it's basically got um, nothing in there at all. That's um, not very useful to get started mining. And um, with that, uh, in that configuration like that, what it will do is it'll actually read the config text. Um, but I prefer to create a, a command line sort of version. So we'll just have the all the, the configuration just on a single line. So what I'm going to do is go back to the actual thread because they did have some um, sample uh, lines that you can use. So um, I'm just going to copy one of these and then we'll just configure it to using it um, how I would actually use it for myself. So the pool that we're going to be using is um, Supernova. Okay, so let's break this down and go through it bit by bit. So the first part is the call to the actual program. Then you've got the pool that we want to be using, which is Supernova. So it's uh, zec.supernova.cc. And then the port number, so that's all correct. Then you've got this zwal. So this is going to be our username and worker name so I know what those are. So my username is risky fire 
And the worker name that I've already got set up for this machine is worker one. And then you've got this ZPSW, that's just gonna be for your worker password. So I'm just gonna delete that and that's gonna be X. And then we should basically be ready to run uh, with this. Of course, there's um, lots of other uh, configuration that we can do, um, but this is, should be just the basic configuration that we need to get started with this. So I'm just gonna save that. And then we'll run it and we'll see whether whether it works or not. And if it doesn't work, then we'll, we'll work through it together and we'll get to the bottom of it. So let's start this miner and see how we get along. Um, just before I start, with the Genoil miner, I was getting uh, 25 to 30 um, souls a second. So let's see how this performs in comparison. So the command window is opened up. It's found both of our GPUs. Uh, like I say, they are RX uh, 470s. Uh, they both have the modified BIOS. And I'm running using that um, uh, higher BIOS configuration. So the current clock speeds is um, around 1100 core clock and um, 2000 megahertz memory clock. So that's the high uh, of the modded version. I just need to allow access for the firewall. And what I'll do is I'll test this with using the actual, um, with the modded BIOS is gonna be the same in both cases, but I'll try it with um, higher memory clocks as it is now. And I'll also try it with a lower memory clock, but a higher core clock and see how that um, works in comparison. At the moment there's lots of accepted shares but I'm not seeing any reports yet of an actual hash rate. I'm not too sure how long it is before until it actually shows you a hash summary. Okay, so we've got our first hash rate hash rate results and it is actually reported as hashes per second whereas all the other miners have reported it in uh, souls per second or solutions per second so the first update that we've got is on each of the gpus one is running at 66.6 .6 and the other one is 64.5 so uh, much faster than the genoil miner and also the uh, silent army version uh, it's also worth noting that the Claymore's miner also has a dev fee um, involved in it. So 2.5% of your mining power is going to go to Claymore, the developer. Um, there is also a no fee version, uh, which means that you'll get slightly lower hash performance, um, but then it's um, technically free to use. Um, personally, I don't really mind paying a little extra um, to compensate the developer for his work and um, yeah it doesn't really make very much difference like I say it's um, two and a half percent is not going to make a great deal to you and you'll, you'll make that back in the higher performance anyway in most cases so I'll just give it uh, one more little update and we'll just see um, how that hash rate is doing just open up tricks so we can take a look at the actual current clock speeds um, of my GPUs is a slight variation because one of them has basically a better quality um, build than the other one. So one uses um, a bit more power um, to get the same performance out of it. So that one I tend to underclock a little bit relative to the other one. Um, I was opening tricks. Okay, so this is actually the uh, secondary uh, GPU, and this one actually works a lot better than, than the first one. If I just look at the hardware monitor, we just can just see some details about it. So we're running at a core clock of 1100, so that core clock is actually slightly underclocked, and the memory clock is slightly overclocked. Um, the base, or, or the default um, memory clock for this uh, GPU is uh, 1750, and we're at 2000. Um, so that all looks fine. I'll just show you the other one just for comparison. So look, if I look at the actual first GPU, you can see how that's set different. So we've got 1,074 core clock, 2,000 memory, but you can also see that I've increased the power limit plus 
um, because if you don't use that um, power limit increase on this particular GPU, like I said, because it's a lesser quality, you don't get that full uh, performance out of it. And that's also the reason you get this variation between the two GPUs. In this case, one is also used for the, the display. So GPU zero is also used for the display, which kind of affects it here as well. Um, but anyway, so it looks like we're getting an average of about 125 hashes per second, which is really good, much, much higher performance than the general uh, miner that I used previously. And so that's really good. We can also use that information, obviously, if you use it on Coin Wars to work out you, you know, your profitability, whether it's better for you to be mining Zcash versus Ethereum or your other coins there. Um, okay, so one other thing I wanted to try and do is if I just change the actual core clocks around, so this time we'll go for a higher core clock, but a lower memory clock, and we'll just see whether that is better or worse for, for this coin. So let's start with the first one. See so if I just go to, we'll just probably the easiest way is just to reset the core, um, but I will increase the uh, power limit just to make sure it hits that correct core speed. And we just need to adjust the second GPU as well. And I'm just gonna reset that one and apply it. So now we have a higher GPU core, but a lower memory core clock. So we're just gonna minimize that. Uh, we'll let it run for a few cycles and then we'll see how the performance is affected. Okay, so we've just had the first update there. It's 141 hashes per second. So that's a good indicator um, that this coin or this algorithm prefers a, um, a higher core speed relative uh, or rather than the actual memory core. Ethereum is very uh, dependent on higher memory uh, speeds. Um, so in comparison, this one, it looks like it's a bit more biased towards a, a higher core speed. So doing this kind of extra testing, it's just going to help you um, optimize your um, your mining machine because uh, what you always want to be looking for is just the best performance and, um, and profitability for your for your mining equipment the, you know getting the best efficiency is what you want to be looking for so if we find that here yeah, this coin is more dependent on the core speed rather than memory then what we can do is we can work to optimize our core speed increase that whilst at the same time reducing our memory speed and then what we're going to get is higher performance for less uh, power usage and also it reduces um you know heat as well which is also an important factor so i'm just going to let it run through a few more and then we'll just get a better average of what what our performance is like okay so it's uh, another update there this one was actually a little bit slower uh, versus the previous one so the other ones were coming in 145 146 and this one has gone to 136 so I think as an average, we'll probably be over the 1, 140 mark. Let's call it 1, 140 hashes uh, per second. So that is actually a really good uh, performance indicator. And um, I'm really pleased with the actual performance of this miner and also those uh, graphics cards. Like I say, they are the Sapphire RX 470s and um, they've been performing incredibly well. I'm really pleased with that, that actual purchase of those uh, cards. Um, but that's what I'm getting at. So I just wanted to uh, share these uh, results with you. Uh, one other thing is, um, just before we sort of wrap up here, uh, let's just take a quick look at um, the Coin Wars website and we'll just confirm whether it's uh, more profitable to mine Ethereum or Zcash on this particular rig. So I know that's something that you guys are always interested in. So let's take a quick look. And um, you know, as always, these calculations are not super accurate, but they give us a, a ballpark figure. So we've Etash, which is for Ethereum, uh, we get about 55 hashes per second and we'll call it 200 watts. We have Equihash, which is for Zcash. Um, I said we're averaging about 140. We'll call it 200 watts there as well. Let's just change the power costs so they're all equal. So effectively, we're using the same power and the hash rates are correct in each case. Um, I still need to check the um, Equihash performance using a wattmeter. I haven't still got quite around to doing that. So at the moment, it is a little bit of um, guesswork. Um, but from what I've seen previously, the mining performance is it's not quite as stressful on your cards as um, Ethereum or the other algorithms. Anyway, let's take a look at the uh, profitability for each one of these algorithms.
Okay, so for the two RX 470s, the revenue is going to be $4.78 per day, um, compared to Ethereum, which is $4.04. So $0.74 cents higher mining Zcash, assuming you're going to mine and sell in both cases. So Zcash is um, slightly more profitable um, at today's rates on those on that particular mining rig. Um, but anyway, I just wanted to share that little extra piece with you. So I just minimize that now. Go back to the miner. So that's it for this video, guys. Uh, once again, thank you very much for watching. Thank you for all your support. Um, don't forget, if there's any uh, links that you need, they'll be in the actual description area below. Um, if you haven't already subscribed, uh, please consider doing so. Um, I share videos like this on a regular basis, and I'd love to have you as part of the uh, community. Um, also, you can follow me on Twitter. Uh, once again, the link is in the actual description, and that's just an easy way for me to keep up to date with you guys and share you know, what I'm doing in, in the whole crypto mining world. So thanks again for watching. I'll see you on the next video.